Good morning, boys and girls. So today we, oh, before I get started, my name is Mrs. Gonzalez, and I am a fourth grade teacher, and I am so excited to do a lesson with you guys today on writing. Now, I have taught for many years, and I have had several students who love writing, and I've had several students who, yeah, maybe not so much into writing. My goal for you guys today is I'm gonna try to set you guys up for a lesson that makes writing seem fun for everybody. Because you are gonna be the one in control. You are the one doing the writing. So you get to make it what you want. So how I'm gonna start off today is my whole objective for you guys is, I have two objectives really, is I'm going to read you guys a story here in a little bit and it's a fairy tale. And I want you guys to be paying attention to what the point of view of that fairy tale is. And by point of view, I mean, who's telling the story? Because that's one of the most important things to do, the first things to do when you start writing a story. Who is telling the story? Is the narrator telling the story? Is a character telling the story? Who? So that's one thing. The second thing I want you guys to be able to do is I want you guys to be able to use a graphic organizer and plan out your own fractured fairy tale. So on that note, boys and girls, I am going to start off by going over with you guys a little bit of vocabulary so you know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna stand up and go over to this chart. All right, I'm sure many of you have heard of a fairy tale before. A fairy tale is a short story that features usually fantasy creatures and usually a little bit of magic. Well, today we're going to read a fairy tale, but we're gonna be writing a fractured fairy tale. So before I go on to the characteristics of a fairy tale, I want you to know, let's go over fractured. Fractured, where have you heard that word fractured before? Think about it. People have heard that word fractured and then usually they end up in the emergency room because we hear fractured if somebody falls out of a tree or falls off their bike and they've broken a bone, fractured bone. You may have heard if, some, if a glass has been fractured, which means it shatters or it breaks. So today we're doing fractured fairy tale. No, we are not gonna take our fairy tale and rip it in half and break the book apart. But what we are doing is we are gonna break out a piece of that fairy tale and put a spin of it on our own. So some things that we're gonna look at as we are reading our fairy tale to kind of have in our mind for writing are characters. You really wanna look at who are the characters in the fairy tale we're reading and who are the characters we wanna put in our own. Characters in a fairy tale are few, but usually they have realistic qualities, but there is always at least one character that's either magical a lot of times, or they, and by magical, I could even mean talking animals. Isn't that kind of magical? It's not something we see every day. I don't see pigs or coyotes or horses talking to me. If I did, my students might worry about me a little bit. Setting, you always want to too think about what is the setting, okay? A fairy tale can usually have more than one setting too. A lot of times it has a setting at the beginning and then as the story goes on, the setting may change. Or maybe your setting stays the same. If you're writing your own fairy tale, the only person who can really control your setting is you, the author. Examples are sometimes there's a castle, a forest, a cottage, a hillside. Okay, you get to kind of create what's in your head and put it on paper. And also all stories, we need a plot. And by plot, I mean we need some type of problem and solution. So every fairy tale usually has a character that has some type of problem or multiple characters that have a problem. And then they usually have a sequence of events, which means what happens first, second, next, how they get to that solution for that problem. Okay, the solution usually sometimes can either involve magic or a hero, but not always. A lot of these characteristics that I've gone over here for a fairy tale, they're in most fairy tales. But you need to realize that 
you may see different elements in different stories. Today, I'm going to read to you guys a fairy tale. This is actually one of my daughter's favorites, and it's called The Three Little Pigs. As I read this story, boys and girls, there's a few things I want you to pay attention to as we're reading. What is the setting of this book, okay? Who, who's telling this book? Is there a character telling this book? Because that's gonna tell us the point of view. Or is it the author? And when there's an author telling a story, we call that third person point of view. And that's almost like we're watching a movie and we're, we are looking down at the story and we're telling what we see is going on. That's third person point of view. If a character is telling a story, that's first person point of view. And you can usually tell if it's a character telling the story by them saying, and then I walked along and blah, 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 and we, and I, and you hear some of those first person pronouns in the story, okay? The next thing is, look at, of course, who the characters are, the setting, but in this story, what is the problem? And how do they get to the solution of the problem? Now, I want you guys to pay attention as I read this story to something very, very important. This is something I have seen when I have taught all the grades. I've taught kinder through fourth so far. What I've seen a lot of people do is they will get those elements down and they'll say the setting, they'll say the characters, they'll say the problem. So-and-so had this problem. And then they quickly go to how the problem was fixed. And then you have like an eight sentence story. That's okay when you're starting out and it's okay for your first draft or your second draft, but you can always try to stretch it out. I want you to pay attention to how this author uses other small details in the story, other sequence of events to stretch out the story to make it more enjoyable for you. Another thing about fairy tales you're gonna notice is the beginning. Think to yourself, what do you think all fairy tales start with? Did anybody say once upon a time? Because if you did, you were right. Most fairy tales start with once upon a time. And what do a lot of fairy tales end with? Hopefully you said a happily ever after. So that's what I know most fairy tales I've read usually start out with. But when I say usually, it doesn't mean always. So today I'm gonna read to you guys the Three Little Pigs. This is illustrated by my Matsuko, Matsuka, okay? It is, now a lot of times we'll see when it's fairy tales or fables or folk tales, the, instead of it saying written by, it will say retold. And this one is retold by Kath Jewett, meaning that it is a tale that has been told many times, and so it's retold. This is not the original author of this story, okay? So, boys and girls, here we go. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs who lived in a cozy cottage on the hill. They loved to eat all the delicious food their mother made them every day. Ugh, who wouldn't? They ate so much that it wasn't long before the three little pigs had grown so big that there was no room for them in the cozy cottage anymore. I'm sorry, said their mother one morning, but it's time you made your own way in the world. So mom's saying, it's time for you to move on. So the very next day, the three little pigs left home. Don't forget to watch out for the big bad wolf, called their mother as she waved goodbye. He'll eat you for supper, so you'll need to build a big, fine, strong house as quickly as you can to help him away. Or keep him away, I'm sorry, we don't want to help him. Keep him away. Don't worry, Ma, they cried, oinked. We can look after ourselves. And the three little pigs trotted off down the hill, each taking a different path. So you can see in the picture, 
the three different paths that the three little pigs took. It wasn't long before the first little pig met a farmer pulling a cart with straw. Please, may I buy some straw to build a house, asked the little pig. Of course, replied the farmer, but a straw house won't be very strong. But the little pig didn't listen. Soon, he was busy stacking the bundles of straw for his new house. In no time at all, the house of straw was finished, and the little pig went inside for a nap. He had just shut his eyes when there was a knock on the door. It was the big bad wolf, and he was hungry. Little pig, little pig, let me in, growled the wolf. No, cried the little pig, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, laughed the wolf. And that's just what he did. Huff, puff, whoosh. Meanwhile, the second little pig was walking along the road when he saw a woodcutter piling up sticks. Please may I buy some sticks, he asked politely. I want to build a house. Of course, answered the woodcutter, but a house made of sticks will soon fall down. But the second little pig wasn't listening. He was much too busy planning his new stick home. Soon the house was finished. The little pig had just sat down to rest when there was a knock on the door. It was the big bad wolf and he was even hungrier now. Little pig, little pig, let me in, he growled. No way, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin, cried the second little pig. Then I'll huff. And I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down, cried the wolf. And that's exactly what he did. Huff, puff, whoosh. Those pigs aren't having good luck. Meanwhile, the third little pig had met a builder. Please may I buy some of your bricks to build my house, he asked. Of course, replied the builder. A fine, strong house of bricks will last forever. The third little pig took the builder's advice. He would build the strongest house in the land. Finally, after a hard day's work, the house was finished. It had four strong walls of brick, a tiled roof, a sturdy wooden door, and a large fireplace with a chimney. You can pay attention to the details of that house that they described in the picture. That was definitely one of the things I was talking about before, that as we read the story, you can notice the smaller details that authors put in that make the story longer, make it more enjoyable, and also can give us an image of what they're trying to explain to us in this setting. The third little pig had just put a pot of turnips on the fire to boil when he saw his brothers running down the road being chased close, or being, sorry, closely followed by the big bad wolf. And if you can see the two little pigs up here running with scared faces and the big bad wolf with his teeth 
snarled out, he's hungry. Quick, cried the third little pig, hide in here. The wolf was very hungry by now, banged on that sturdy front door. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in, he growled. His tummy was rumbling very loudly with hunger. No way, not by the hairs on our chinny chin chins, cried the three little pigs. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, laughed the wolf. You can also notice in the illustrations, because you guys will get the opportunity to illustrate your pictures, facial expressions can really tell you how a character feels in a story, whether they're scared, happy, hungry. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he puffed, and he huffed. But the brick houses stood firm. The wolf was furious. He climbed up onto the roof and shouted down the chimney. If I can't blow your house down, I'll come down the chimney and gobble you all up. This wolf has to be getting hungry. He has had to work pretty hard for his meal so far. How many of you would have given up by now? I would have. I might have already gone to my fridge or gone somewhere else. But he is set on these pigs. So the big bad wolf jumped and landed with a huge splash in the pot of turnips boiling on the fire below. Eww! He leaped up with a scream and ran out of the house, never to be seen again. Now you can see that I got kind of loud when I said the eow. When you see text that's larger than the rest and in all capitals, that's kind of a hint for you that the author is wanting you to know that that character was loud and yelling. So once again, he, he leaped up with a scream and ran out of the house, never to be seen again. And the three little pigs lived happily ever after in the house made of bricks. The end. All right, boys and girls, I will be back in just one second. I'm going to get my posters put up so that we can look at the graphic organizer of how to plan this absolutely fun writing assignment that I've promised you. Welcome back, boys and girls. I hope you guys enjoyed The Three Little Pigs. So we're going to use this book to help us kind of plan out our writing. And so how I do that is usually what I do is I always write on a graphic organizer what the classic version or whatever the red version I read was about, okay? So the classic version. Who were the characters in that one? Well, we had the main characters that really played a role in it was the three little pigs, of course. And then there was the big bad wolf. Now, if you want, these are what we consider our main characters. If you want to also put your supporting characters down, you could. By supporting characters, I mean the mother, the builder, the man that was chopping the wood. Those are the supporting characters. Other characters that were in the story, they may not have been a huge part of the problem and solution, but we needed them still to make the story make sense. So you can even plan out your supporting characters in this section if you need to. The next thing you wanna look at is setting. Now, boys and girls, what I teach my class all the time is you don't always have to do things off of memory. If you just read your book, and you're like, oh, what was the setting? What was the story? I don't know, I'll just, you don't have to make it up. There's nothing stopping you from opening up that book. 
and going back, I'm gonna put my marker down so I don't draw in my book, and go back and look. Oh, once upon a time, there were three little pigs who lived in a cozy cottage on a hill. Look at the pictures to help you with that setting. Cozy cottage on a hill. If I go through and I look into the rest of the story, the pictures even further on in the story, the pictures all sim seem similar. They're outdoors, okay? They're on hills. There's some dirt here or there. So I'm gonna say the story is going to stay outside along hillside. Now, who has teachers, think to yourself, who has teachers that always tell you that everything needs to be in complete sentences? I'm gonna raise my hand to you guys, I'm guilty of that. I can tell you my students right now are being like, yes, Miss Gonzalez, you tell us that all the time. Except for when it comes to graphic organizers and planning out stuff. This isn't meant to be pretty, boys and girls. If you need to do like little phrases or bullets, do it, okay? Do whatever you need. You don't have a teacher standing over your shoulder right now at home, unless your parents are a teacher. And then, sorry, you can't escape it. But you don't have a teacher, unless that's that your case, at home standing over saying full, complete sentences. This is your time to take what I'm showing you here and make it fun at home. So it does not have to look just like mine, okay? It could even be, doesn't have to be all pretty with pretty lines. Do whatever you want, just have some fun with this, okay? The problem, oh my goodness, what was the problem in this? Well, I, the problem was with all three little pigs. The wolf wanted to eat the pigs. Oh, it's a problem for the pigs, not the wolf. Well, there was problems for the wolf. He just didn't get his problem solved. But the pig's problem was that the wolf wanted to eat them. He was hungry, he wanted a snack, and he wanted those pigs. Well, we come down to the solution. I'm sitting here wondering how many of you are thinking, well, what was the solution? Because for the first little pig, didn't really find a solution with the straw house. His straw house wasn't the solution. But he was able to run away and escape. The second little pig, his house of sticks, wasn't the solution. Who had the solution? That third little pig, that's right. The third little pig had the solution. The third little pig built a strong house, okay? Guys, see here, I'm not writing out, oh, the third little pig built a house of bricks, that house of bricks couldn't be blown down. Then, I don't need to write all of that, that's okay. I just need to know what's this problem. The wolf wanted to eat him, the solution was, the third little pig was smart enough to build his house of bricks, okay? All right, so we're done with the three little pigs, kinda. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit about a fractured fairy tale. So, I am hoping that the girls at home I know, girls, I, from, from my teaching experience, I've seen a lot of girls get into my fairy tale lessons a little bit more than the boys, especially when you're up in the like fourth grade, fifth grade. You boys are starting to get into some of those other things like sports or, oh, I can hear some of my students yelling out, Fortnite! <sighs> their favorite thing in the world. Drives me crazy because they're doing those dances all the time, but they love it. So boys, I'm gonna do you guys a favor today, okay? We're gonna throw a little Fortnite twist in this. Stay with me, and I'm gonna show you guys how you guys can make this anything you want and how you can make it fun. So, I'm going to now make my fractured fairy tale. Now a fractured fairy tale, like I told you guys, you guys are gonna take a part out. And then you can, when you take some type of part out, you change it to whatever you want. 
You could take out a character and change it to a different character. You could take out the setting. You could take out the problem. It doesn't matter. You can change. You can change multiple things, okay? Some fractured fairy tales follow really close to the original, and some go way crazy away from the original. I'm gonna go a little bit crazy off the original for some of you boys. I had some fun with creating my own version last night, and so I'm gonna share it with you guys. So I'm gonna show you how I brainstormed. So I sat down with my little Three Little Pigs graphic organizer like this, and over here I started with my version. And I thought, who do I want the characters to be in my version? Well, I wanted it to have a New Mexico twist. So I said, you know what, I don't want pigs. I want three road runners. And I don't want a big bad wolf. I want a coyote. Okay, how many of you guys have seen coyotes? I mean, we have them here in New Mexico. Let's see, my setting, I could do a cozy cottage, but since we're talking about coyotes and um, roadrunners, I'm gonna say that mine is in the New Mexico, and I'm gonna put an NM, the abbreviation for New Mexico, the New Mexico desert, and I'm gonna say it's the hot summer. Oh, how nice does that sound to some of you guys? A nice hot summer outside playing. So then, guys, I'm gonna, what do I want my problem to be? Well, so here's where I'm gonna fracture it a little bit. In this story, the three little pigs were, they were perceived as the good characters and the big bad wolf was the bad character. I can change that up if I want. I don't want my coyote to be the bad character. I'm gonna kinda, I want him to kinda be perceived as the one who has the problem, the one who's something's being wrong to him. So my problem is that the road runners are playing, here you go boys, Fortnite. inside, away from heat. Do you see how I'm not putting complete sentences? Is that okay? Yes, because I'm just brain dumping my ideas on paper, okay? So, um, and they won't let Coyote play and I'm gonna do shorthand right here. This B slash C is because they don't, I ran out of room, like him. See guys, it's not pretty, it's not perfect. Nobody cares. It's my, it's my writing. Same thing with yours at home. It doesn't have to be pretty, doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so I know who my characters are. I know my setting, I know my problem. I'll get to a point where I'm gonna kinda get to where, but I need to know where the end is going. Where am I gonna go towards the end? So I kinda need to know the solution, the ending, which is, so, <laughs> it'll be fun. Um, the solution is, oh yeah, I did this for you boys. Coyote challenges the, and I'm gonna put RR for Roadrunners, to a Fortnite dance off. And if he wins, or you know what, I'm gonna, cause I'm, this is my ending, he wins and gets to play. with Roadrunners. Okay, let me go off to the side so you could see what I did. My head was kind of in the way. I'm tall, I had to squat down there. Okay, 
So this is just my brain dump of just like where I'm going with my story. My characters, my setting, my problem, how I want my story to end. When you finish that part, the next thing you guys can do is now you can think of sequence of events. So sequence of events. This is where I'm gonna to come to this other graphic organizer that I kind of have. And boys and girls, um, a lot of these, you know, you can, you can create your own if you don't have these printed out in the packets. Um, you can get just scratch piece of paper and draw right character setting problem solution. It does not have to be beautiful. It doesn't have to be something printed from a printer, okay? That is the beauty of at home learning, guys. You can use the back of some other page that you did for something, just get creative. So my fractured fairy tale sequencing chart, sequencing really quick. I just wanna go over that word sequencing. Sequencing is the order of events. So what happens first, what happens second or next, after that, after that, after that, all the way to the end, okay? So this is where you're gonna think of your big chunk of ideas of the big major events. Now that doesn't mean I'm writing out my story on here because there's gonna be fine details about like maybe the characters are talking and there's dialogue or I'm explaining what the setting looks like that I will put when I draft my writing. So, all right, boys, here we go. Once upon a time, so I wanna start mine off with, of course, once upon a time, because a lot of fairy tales start with that, right? And I'm gonna say there were, Three Roadrunners. Um, and a coyote. In the New Mexico desert. In the hot summer. Now this is important. When you start your stories, a lot of times, usually if it depends on how long the story is, either in the first sentence, first paragraph, first page, you usually want to do a few things. Introduce characters, and you want to go ahead and introduce somewhere in there the setting. It sets the ground of where the story is kind of taking place, who's going to be in the story. And one thing I always tell my own students that I teach at school is you wanna make sure it's interesting in some way. And a lot of times, once upon a time is its own, it's a hook. Think of like a fish hook. And a fish hook grabs a fish and it catches a fish out of water. Well, when you're an author, you wanna use your author hook and you wanna grab your reader and catch them and keep them on the hook to keep reading what you're writing, okay? The next thing is, is, okay, my next event is, um, since it was so hot, the road runners were playing Fortnite, and I could still add in some little details in here that if I think, like in my head, I didn't think of this last night, but it's something I wanna add in my story. They were playing Fortnite in their Adobe house that was cool. Now, I didn't think of the Adobe house last night when I was planning this out, but I think it's a great New Mexico twist to pull in now because we do have a lot of houses around here with Adobe. The next thing is, um, I'm gonna have to get down. Remember, I'm tall. All right, Coyote heard them playing and he wanted to join. Who wouldn't want to join? They're in there playing Fortnite, doing all those silly dances that drive all your teachers crazy. But you guys still love it. And then he heard them playing and he wanted to enjoy, he wanted to join, and here is where I'm gonna throw the problem. 
They said no. Because they do not like coyotes. Man, how awful is that? Just because you're a coyote, you can't play Fortnite with some other animals just because you're a coyote. I know this is a writing lesson, but as you can see, something I didn't think to throw in there was theme. And I know lots of fourth and fifth graders have worked on theme, and that's a message that usually a story will teach its readers or a character. Hmm. I'm not going to completely focus on it, but I want you to think, is there a theme going on so far in this story? He can't play just because he's a coyote. Doesn't seem right. So then my next detail that I would say is this is where I try to like, this is where I'm saying like you guys don't have it over there so I can add in other things. My next thing that comes is coyote comes back dressed as a road runner to try and fool them. So they, so they didn't believe him. They didn't believe him. So they challenged him to a race to see if he could keep up. Because boys and girls, what are road runners? They're, they're fast, right? They're the fastest land bird. So they challenged him to a race to see if he could keep up. And guess what happened? I'm just gonna throw this on with this one. He didn't keep up. And his plan was spoiled. <sighs> Poor coyote. So do you guys see how in most stories, the wolf is always perceived as the bad guy? In this one, I'm trying to say that the wolf isn't the bad guy, right? The coyote, in my version, is the one who's having something being wrong to him. The roadrunners are the ones that aren't being very nice. So I ran out of room on this graphic organizer. I'm going to leave it there just for a second so you guys can kind of see. I'm going to tape up just another one on top just because I need a little bit more room. And I had to grab some tape because my stickiness on the back of my paper is just not wanting to stick. All right, we'll see if that stays up. If it falls, then you guys will get to see me chase it around. All right, so he couldn't play because he was a coyote. He tried to be a roadrunner to fool them, didn't work out. So then Coyote had another idea. His next idea was to challenge the road runners in a fortnight dance off. Now, I would love to show you guys some fortnight dance moves. Wouldn't be pretty. Too bad I couldn't have some of my students here because they're doing them all day long while I'm teaching and they should be masters at it by now. Um, but I'm sure you can picture some of those dance moves in some of your guys' heads, some of those ones that your classmates are doing in class when your teacher's trying to teach and their back's turned. Oh, you know they're standing up and doing them. So Coyote challenged the Roadrunners to a dance off and what he said, he said, I'm gonna just come on down here, is he made them a deal. If I lose, I'll leave and never come back. If I win, I get to play Fortnite with you. Now, Boys and girls, remember, you don't have to have complete sentences on your graphic organizer. You don't have a teacher standing over your shoulder. Just get your ideas down on paper. You can change it and make it look better later. Your hand, 
boys and girls, this isn't even my nicest handwriting because I'm trying to show you just blob it out down on paper. So then comes the end. And that would be where Coyote beats the Roadrunners. Let's see. What would some of my students say in their story? Um, with his, oh, I can even hear one of my students' voices saying, his sick moves. The Roadrunners were so blown away they changed their mind about how they felt about coyotes. Now, this is just my brain dump of ideas, guys. This is not my story. Now, so where I would go from this, boys and girls, is I would take all of this that I wrote, my sequencing events, and this, and then I could go sit down and start planning out now my writing. That doesn't mean you have to do it today. You can write your brain dump of everything, and then you can come back to it another time, okay? The other thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is this isn't the only way you have to brainstorm ideas. It looks different, and every writer's table, when they sit down to organize their thoughts, it looks different. Some people sit down, and the way they start is they illustrate their pictures. They draw out what they're seeing, and then they put the words to paper next. So if you're like, oh yeah, I just can't get my ideas though on paper, stuff starts to jumble. I see the pictures, but I don't know the words then see the pictures and draw the pictures and put the words later. The next thing is, is I have some students um, that they tell me their brain just thinks so fast. They can't get their hand or their fingers to type or write as fast as their head is thinking. Well, there are things that you could do. You could record yourself telling the story you could, there are some computers where they have, I believe it's called co-writer. Um, I think it's co-writer. Um, on, especially on the Albuquerque public schools or a lot of schools have co-writer. You can talk to the computer and it types it out for you. It's a way for if your brain's just moving so fast to get the story out there. Okay. Um, some other ways is... If you have any younger siblings listening to this right now and they're like, that sounds fun, I wanna do that, but I don't know how to write yet. Well, they can dictate, and what dictate means is they say the story to either you or to a parent and they write it out for them. So there's lots of options. I hear students all the time give me excuses or reasons why they can't write and they always get so frustrated with me when I say, all right, tell me why you can't be a writer. And I'm gonna tell you guys there, that there's a way around whatever you're saying you can't do. You can draw pictures, you can have somebody help you, you can use co-writer. The other thing is guys, as you could see, I just threw Fortnite into my story. How silly. If you are, you're like, well, I'm not into video games, I'm not into Fortnite. I am a gymnast. Okay, take whatever fairy tale you want to use. Write down any fairy tales you like. Cinderella, Snow White, any of them, okay? Um, Rapunzel, Rumpelstiltskin. And whatever you're into, if you're into gymnastics, then throw a gymnastics twist into it. If you are into sports, you're a basketball player, throw a basketball twist into it. You can create and make this whatever you want. You're the only one who can. All right, boys and girls, I'm gonna take a break and see if I have time for one last read aloud and I will be right back. Welcome back, boys and girls. Okay, 
So I don't know if we're gonna have time to get through this whole story, but that's okay. I wanted to show you guys a little bit of what a published fractured fairy tale might look like. Um, and there's tons out there, ones with Cinderella, Snow White. This one is called The Three Javelinas by Susan Lowell, illustrated by Jim Harris, and it's a reading rainbow book. And this is, everyone knows the story of the three little pigs now that we just read. Well, this is a little twist. You're gonna meet the three Javelinas. And it's a Southwestern, these are Southwestern cousins of the three little pigs, okay? So I'm going to open up. This is a Southwestern adaptation. This book refers to the three little pigs as a folktale, which it is. All fairy tales are a form of folktales. Um, this story takes place in the Sonoran des Desert where Native American, Mexican, and Anglo cultures blend together. I chose this one on purpose just because it ties in with us New Mexicans so well. Once upon a time, way out in the desert, there were three little javelinas. Javelinas are wild, hairy, southwestern cousins of pigs. Their heads were hairy, their backs were hairy, and their bony legs, all the way down to their hard little hooves, were very hairy, but their snouts were soft and pink. <clears throat> One day, the three little javelinas trotted away to seek their fortunes. In this hot, dry land, the sky was almost always blue. Steep purple mountains looked down on the desert, where the cactus forest grew. Soon the little javelinas came to a spot where the path divided and each one went their different way. The first little javelina wandered lazily along. He didn't see a dust storm whirling across the desert until it caught him. The whirlwind blew away and left the first little javelina sitting in a heap of tumbleweeds Brushing himself off, he said, I'll build a house with them, and in no time at all, he did. Ooh, house of tumbleweeds. Doesn't sound very cozy. Then along came a coyote. He ran through the desert so quickly and so quietly that he was almost invisible. In fact, this was only one of Coyote's many magical tricks. He laughed when he saw the tumbleweed house and smelled the javelina inside. Mmm, a tender, juicy piggy, he thought. Coyote was tired of eating mice and rabbits. And that's pretty much what coyotes around here in our area, their main source is, is mice and rabbits. He called out sweetly, little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, shouted the first javelina, who had a lot of hair on his chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said the coyote. So do you guys see the similarities already to this story from the three little pig? We have some very common things said, but also a little bit different. And he huffed and he puffed and he blew the little tumbleweed house away. But in all of the hullabaloo, I love that word, hullabaloo, it's quite a funny word. The first little javelina escaped and went looking for his brother and sister. Coyote, who was very sneaky, tiptoed along behind. So hullabaloo is kind of like a funny word for saying in all the craziness, all the chaos. Okay, let me just show you that picture one more time. The second little javelina walked for miles among giant cactus plants called, and I always say this wrong, sagawoos. My kids laugh at me, and I have kids always tell me how to say that correctly. See, even teachers say things wrong. They held their ripe red fruit high in the sky, but they made almost no shade, and the little javelina grew hot. Then he came upon a Native American woman who was gathering sticks from inside a dried up cactus. She planned to use those long sticks 
to knock down the sweet cactus fruit. The second little pig said, may I please have some six sticks to, to build a house? Hail, she said, which means yes in the language of the desert people. Just by the picture with the language of the desert people, I am making a inference that that might either be in the Navajo language, possibly. When he was finished building his house, he lay down in the shade. Then his brother arrived, panting from the heat, and the second little javelina moved over and made a place for him. They look so cuddly together. Hairy and cuddly. Pretty soon, Coyote found the cactus rib house. He used his magic to make his voice sound just like the, another javelina's. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, he called. But the little javelinas were suspicious. The second one cried, no, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Bah, thought Coyote. I am not going to eat your hair. Ugh, hairball. Then Coyote smiled, showing all his sharp teeth. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed and the sagaru cactus ribs came tumbling down. Lot of similarities. The third little javelina trotted through beautiful Palo Verde trees with green trunks and yellow flowers. She saw a snake sliding by, smooth as oil. A hawk floated round and round above her. Then she came to a place where a man was making adobe bricks from mud and straw. The bricks lay on the ground baking in the hot sun. The third little javelina thought for a moment and said, may I please have a few adobes to build a house? See. Si answered the man, which means yes in Spanish, the brick maker's language. Ooh, another language, very common here. So the third javelina built herself a solid little adobe house, cool in summer and warm in winter. When her brothers found her, she welcomed them in and locked the door behind them and Coyote followed their trail. I'm going to stop right there, boys and girls. So we are running out of time. And I know some of you are like, but, 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 I know. So I'm going to encourage you guys to do something for me. I know a lot of you guys are doing your distance learning with your Google Classrooms and things like that, and some of you aren't. Maybe you can log on to a computer, go onto YouTube, and find a reading of the three little javelinas and listen to the rest of the story. It ends really good with the, at the end. So you can also, I challenge you to look up some other fractured fairy tales to listen to. I know there's one out there that's called the true story of the three little pigs, which is one of my favorites. And it's a story where it's told from the wolf's perspective and how it shows he's the good guy, and really the pigs are just misunderstanding everything and making him sound horrible. It is quite the funny story. You really should look that one up. Before I go, though, I just want to encourage you guys one last time. Writing is never meant to be finished. A lot of students stress that they think that their writing needs to be perfect when they put it on paper. Writing is never done. Even authors who publish books have first editions, second editions, third editions. And what that means is they make a book, they publish it, it gets sent out, it's in the stores, people buy them, and they find mistakes or things wrong. And so then they go and they fix them, they send it back out, reprint, and it has to be republished and resent out. So don't be afraid to make mistakes in your writing. It's okay. Make additions, okay? Well, boys and girls, I hope you guys had fun. I hope that you have fun writing your own fractured fairy tales at home. And I want to thank you guys for joining us today at At Home with APS. I'll see you guys hopefully soon. Bye-bye.